And good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigera. I am with LogicalSignals.com and also TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elio Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Wednesday, September 15th, 2021. The market did initially continue to decline this morning, and it reached a low at uh, 15307.75, and then lurched off of that level and rallied basically for the balance of the day. Now, I initially have put this together as that we completed uh, minute wave five and then minor wave one. <clears throat> but I want to show a little bit something interesting with this particular move in here. And so I'm gonna go down to the 30 minute chart. Well, first, let me just show you that here within this third wave, we had one, two, three, and then an A, B, C as a four. So that the B wave was an irregular. So A, B, and then a C, with the B wave putting in a new low below that of the uh, third wave or the internal third wave of this larger third wave. Now, that appears to have happened again, but it's in a different position this time. If I put the wave five there and the completion of minor wave one here, then this would be A, B, C, and the wave two, not that it would end there, but it does overlap the finishing point for wave one. Now, so I need to dig into a little bit more research to see if that is acceptable. I'm gonna tell you why I'm looking at that and why I'm now considering it. We go down to, <clears throat> excuse me, the 30 minute chart. Open this up just a little bit so we can see. I can count one, two, three, four, five. So I could put the five here. <clears throat> this in turn is an A, B, C. Then it's a A, B, C down. So let's just run some Fibonacci uh, retracements so we can take a look at what could we be expecting from a B wave within this structure. So if I'm looking for just a normal retracement for a B wave, as it relates to the A wave, I'd be looking for it to come down into here. But the most common retracements for an irregular B wave is that wave B is going to be 1.382 times the length of wave A. And that's exactly where this ended today and then launched in a C wave. So, I don't wanna necessarily be breaking any rules because uh, wave two to wave one is a hard and fast rule, but this is not the completion point for wave two. This would be up here, wherever this ends up finishing off. This is where that completion point would be. So I believe it would be allowable. So if that's being the case, I'm going to move this five back up over here. and then get rid of that. Now somebody else might tell me I'm wrong and that'll be fine because I do intend to look into this in, in R.N. Elliott's original works. But I believe I could remember seeing one um, where wave two produced an irregular B wave and then a C because it's still second wave, still a three wave structure. And there's A and there's B and this just happens to be the C. Now, the other portion that does have to work in here is that all of wave two then, or the C wave, as it relates to the A wave, would come in at 1.618 times the length of wave A. So now let me run some extensions and let's see if that doesn't fit the picture. So I'm going to go back again to there. Wait there, come on, over there, and then back down to that low. 
right there, and 1.618 is right there. So it's already gone almost 2.382. So that no longer <clears throat> really fits the scenario. So that's why I would go back, but I wanted to go through this together so that you can show the, pro I can show you the process of how we would come up with this. Just because one actually fits perfectly, then the second leg doesn't. Now it's 2.382 right now, got up to 1515, uh, 15,515, almost 516 uh, during the regular session today. So I'm not convinced that this is the case. And what that then portends, it's like, okay, so let me remove that drawing and now put back just retracements, what we would look for as retracements for wave two. And that would be putting it there and putting this down here. Now let's see how that all comes out. Now you can see it does fit in terms of what the wave two could do. 50% easy, 618 easy, even 70% retracement. So all of that still fits. So I'm gonna leave this for right now because otherwise we'd be looking at a much larger wave two, which is acceptable under Elliot. In fact, if you look into the Elliot as he wrote, second waves can actually be a little bit deceptive in terms of they can retrace nearly all of wave one. So it could almost be 100% retracement or 90% retracement and still be a wave two. So both scenarios fit but I'm gonna leave this for right now. And here's now what I'm looking for for tomorrow. I'm looking for, I'm gonna break this down again onto a 15 minute chart so we can start to see inside this wave. There's one of C, two of C, and this would best be labeled as three of C, four of C, and now we're getting the fifth wave. Where can the fifth wave go? Well. 526, 570, sure, those levels. So again, it fits into the scenario of what I'm looking for in terms of a collective bounce and that it fits within Fibonacci requirements and also within Elliott requirements. The only one that I really need to check out and because in the wave two position, I've not encountered it before. That doesn't mean it can't happen. It doesn't mean that the NASDAQ is gonna just lead the pack and just change how I have to view things. But I don't wanna be breaking any rules. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take a look at uh, Robert Proctor's work and R.N. Elliott's original works to see if this indeed is plausible. If not, then five and one are gonna get moved that back down to here and we're still in a wave two correction. And that would be unfolding as, hey, this could be A, B, and this is still a C wave. That very plausible, and still these levels would come in. But we'd actually be looking for a little bit stronger of uh, upside because we'd have to put it back down to here. And if I put it back down there, here we are looking for, we've already surpassed 50%. And then the 618 is at uh, 15,535, we'll call it. And then the next level is 566. Both very realistic. And if we're looking for wave two, we kind of always look for the previous four. And there it is again, that they can come into. And those both fit within these parameters. So. I still think it's a wave two. I still think that the NASDAQ has completed all of the advancing sequences. And now we're just trying to fit what the market is telling us as to whether minor wave one ended here or minor wave one ended here. But I've got it covered now for either scenario. So now I'm gonna let the market unfold and basically tell me because I still can actually 
Count this as only one, two, three, four, five. And that likely is a little four right there. So that little green bar. So that could be one, two, three, four, and a five. Very quick, very strong. So um, actually having seen that, I am now going to go back. And so I'm going to mark this back down to this level, that this indeed, and this is just a very strange little swing down and it fit perfectly at 1.382. Um, very rare that I've seen that, but uh, that's what we're gonna, I'm going to do. So I'm gonna move this back down to there, put that there, get rid of that. And I'm glad that I went through this together because you're going to, you're seeing my process now as I go through and try to determine what my labeling is going to be and what the market's next move is. And that was a good thing to, to show together because if you're off doing Elliot on your own, this is going to be a, this is a little bit of an Elliot lesson in terms of how we're going to have to figure this out. But by opening this up, I now can see that this is one, two, three, four, five. So, and this could be A, B, and we're in a C. Here. And that being the case, I'm gonna be looking for this. So we should be, again, for tomorrow, we should see some additional upside and then possibly up to resistance at 534, 35, and 566 up to 573. So, and then for the market to again turn around, wave two would be done and we'd be dropping in a minor third wave. Again, under Elliott rules and guidelines, the third wave of any impulse one of one, three, and five, the third wave is most often the longest and the strongest wave and will contain an extension. And that extension normally would come within wave three. Now, having said that, it is also possible for wave one and wave five to extend, but what wave three cannot be, it cannot be the shortest wave out of one, three, and five. So we could bear that all in mind because as the moves unfold, these are the characteristics that I am applying to make sure that what, what the market is doing is indeed has the right feel, has the right look. As I've discussed before, this is how I come around and come about all of that. So again, for tomorrow, a little bit of more additional upside to complete, hopefully this wave two, and then we should begin to head lower again. Now, whether it all starts tomorrow, we'll have to wait and see. So this is where I'm gonna leave it. And the only thing I'm gonna leave with you is again, trade what is in front of you. And by that, I'm also suggesting that we remain in the now. We don't have anything to do with the past. We can get resistance points and support points by what has happened. And I can't see into the future. So I can only gauge by what the Fibonacci relationships and the Elliott relationships kind of give me hints but nothing is written in stone. So we trade what's in front of us, we remain in the now, and therefore we're able to trade when things break above resistance or break below support or break below our moving averages. We have an idea because we're looking for the start of a third wave. When that begins, the market's gonna let us know. Thanks. And the next update will be on Thursday, the 15th, uh, 16th, excuse me. <laughs>